Yeah, exactly. All right, so here's a little video on the ambiguous case, all right? How to know whether there's one triangle, no triangles possible, or two triangles possible. All right, so it kind of works like a flow chart, but I don't like to memorize things. I like to visualize and think of it the following way. So first, if you're given angle side side, all right, so let's say that we're given an obtuse angle, like 118.7 degrees, and then we're given a side adjacent to that, that's 8.2 units long, and a side opposite to that, that's nine units long, all right? Could we make a triangle like this? All right, since the side opposite this angle is bigger than the side adjacent, we could. All right, and I can illustrate that by making, uh, by making a circle. And what the circle illustrates is, I could imagine rotating point D around point C along this circle. And if I did that, it would still, it would still um, have the same angle side and side. So <clears throat> if I said solve a triangle with angle 118.7, side across from it is nine and side adjacent is 8.2, like you can make that triangle because nine is bigger than 8.2, so it's gonna reach that opposite side. Correct. Exactly. So if the opposite side is less than 8.2, notice how it's not going to cross line AB in front of point A, thus making a triangle until it's bigger than 8.2. Look, as soon as this gets, like when this is 8.2, it's not quite long enough to reach, but once it's bigger than 8.2, now it can make a triangle. All right. But once it's less than 8.2, it's not going to make a triangle. All right. So, so the obtuse case is is pretty simple not that this is a simple thing but it's either going to be one triangle if the side opposite is more than the side adjacent or no triangles if the side opposite is less than the side adjacent all right then the other case is going to be um if this angle is acute all right now if you're wondering why i'm skipping over if this angle is 90 well then it's just a right triangle and you know then you could just do socatella if this angle was 90. So that's why we don't really talk about it. All right. If this angle was 90, then it's either going to reach this side or it's not. But we're not, it's not really important here. All right. Yeah. Right. Yeah, don't ever feel like you're going to look stupid. But the thing about that is the perpendicular bisector, you don't know if it's going to go through it's if it's going to go through the vertex. So this wouldn't be a height because it doesn't go through the vertex. All right. Nice. That oh boy. <laughs> yeah, I love it. I love it. No problem. All right, cool. So now let's look at when this is acute. Um, all right, so now you're either going to – the side is either not going to be long enough, like right now, it's not going to be long enough and reach this other side, or it's going to be just long enough to make exactly one right triangle, or it's going to be long enough to make two triangles, like one like this, and then one with the same angles and sides like this, All right, or it's going to be too long where it can only make one triangle, where if it's swung around – it wouldn't, it'd be too long where it wouldn't make a triangle, an obtuse triangle. It would only make an acute triangle. All right, so. No. Yeah, talk. I would start. Yeah, I would start. Bigger than or the same. Yeah. So, so yeah, first, just if the side opposite is bigger or equal to seven, there's only one triangle. Because like, look, if this is seven here, 
I, it's not, it's, it's not going to make a triangle going this way. It's only going to make one like going this way. And then if it's more than seven. Yeah. If it's more than seven, then it's, it's going to be too long to make another triangle, but you'll just have this triangle ACD. Yeah, so if the opposite side is more than the adjacent side and the gate and the angle is acute. Or honestly, if it's obtuse, if the side opposite is bigger than the side adjacent, there's always one triangle. That's one way to think about it. All right. Mm -hmm. Now, if this side is less than seven. All right, so remember, we'll, we started at seven. And when it's seven, we know there's one triangle. But now if it's less than seven, all right, I'm going to make this a little more acute just to make this emphasize this. Um, Oops, if this angle here, or if this side is less than seven, you could have two triangles. Like right now you have triangle A, C, D with the 42.5 degree angle, a side that's seven and a side opposite of 42.5, that's 5.3. Or this triangle, A, C, E, which also has a 42.5 degree angle, a side adjacent that's seven and a side opposite that's 5.3. Um, no, because, you know, the radius of all the circles, all the radiuses are the same. So how do we know in this case, all right, when, if there's going to be one or two or no triangles, all right, this is when you got to find the height. So anytime you have an acute angle and the side opposite is less than the side adjacent, we need to find the height. So you could find the height by drawing a perpendicular line from C to side AB, and then doing Sokatoa with like 42.5, all right, this height, which would be side C, E, and AC, which is seven, right, because we got a right triangle, ACE, do Sokatoa and get that, the height, which is CE. Then you compare the height to the opposite side. So if the opposite side, like it is right now, is less than the height, then it's it's not going to reach because the height is really the shortest distance from point C to line AB because it's measured down a perpendicular line. So if our side is less than that shortest distance, it's not going to reach. So notice how like this point D will not reach until yeah zero triangles. It would look like sure. If the adjacent side is less than the opposite side, there's one triangle, correct, no matter what. Or one, it, it could be one if it's, uh, it could be if this opposite side is very, is equal to 4.7, you would have a right triangle. It's very rare, it could happen. So, so I would think of it as, if the opposite side of the given angle is greater than the adjacent side, there's one triangle, you're done. If the opposite side is less than the adjacent side, then if the angle is obtuse, there's no triangles. If it's acute, then you find the height. And once you find the height, now we're just comparing the height, in this case, 4.7 CE to CD. And if CD is less than the height, there's no triangles. If CD is equal to the height, there's exactly one triangle. And if C, yeah. And if CD is bigger than the height, but still less than the adjacent side, then that's when you get two triangles. And what would you do here? Yep. Yep, and then here, these would be our two triangles, triangle A, C, F, and triangle A, C, D. And um, I'm going to delete this for a second because, oops, delete that, because we don't need that anymore. All right, and then what would you do from here? Well, now we have these two triangles. All right, we know that C, F is 5.7 because it's really just C, D, just like kind of swinging around angle C. All right, and then you would... 
you would solve these two triangles separately. So like first you could do the law of sines and figure out by doing the sine of 42.5 over 5.7 equals the sine of D or D. Well, it's going to be D because if we're doing a law of sines, we're only going to get an acute angle. And then you get, so yeah, the sine of D over seven and you get that that angle is 56.6, right? Then you would have to know that angle CFD, which isn't an angle in any of our triangles that we're trying to solve, but it is a an angle in this isosceles triangle, right? That's also going to be 56.6 because again, triangle CFD is isosceles. So I, if I know those base angles are equal, Exactly. Yep. So 180 minus 56.6 angle AFC, right? All right. So now in both triangles AFC and triangle ACD, which again, both those triangles have the same angle side side, right? This is why it's called the ambiguous case. Um, now for, for both those triangles, you know, two sides and you know, two angles. So then for the smaller triangle, you could do like 180 minus 42.5 and 123 to find that angle. And then for the bigger triangle, you could do 180 minus 42.5 minus 56.6 to find this angle. And then last but not least, you would in the smaller triangle, you could do law of sines to find this side. And then the bigger triangle, you could do law of sines to find this side. And now you find this. Well, yeah, but it's two that have the same angle side and side. The third one is, is this triangle, which we're not really interested in solving, but I mean, you can. Yeah. Exactly, yeah, you need to know that that's isosceles exactly to find these other angles. Sound good? Yeah, I'm going to pause this video.